when I uh, when I show you something that would show up there, I'll just turn my screen and let you let you see it. Um, do you guys have your computers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's mainly for creating accounts on and like doing some of this stuff with it because there's some some tools that I think might be a little bit helpful. Um, all right, so. Uh, as mentioned, the objectives are uh, describe how dyslexia affects the brain and creating a personal knowledge system uh, for general knowledge, code snippets, and checklists, because those are some really big things that will help out. Um, and what I can do is I'll, I'll start off with a quick anecdote about how I like discovered that I was dyslexic and what I did. So way back uh, in high school, I took an AP Algebra 2 class and ended up failing it. Uh, now, what happened was the teacher discovered that while I understood everything was happening in the math, I would always fail every graded test because it was, um, I, I would flip the signs around. So multiplications that divide, um, and the, the rules of those tests were like every single one was minus certain points. It wasn't just like the first one. So I would get like zero points essentially on everything. But my homework would be correct. And so we discovered that when I was under time pressure, I would flip things. But when I had plenty of time to double check my work, I wouldn't. Or at least not nearly as often. So I dropped out of that What went into an Algebra 1 class. I knew all the math and everything else. I told the teacher that I was dyslexic and asked her to just strongly on every homework and every little thing mark down, hey, you did this thing. And so I essentially got instant feedback on when I was having dyslexic tendencies and just spent that rest of that year figuring out strategies for how to, how to cope with dyslexia. And at the time it felt how do I get around this? Um, and then throughout the years, I've discovered the benefits of dyslexia and like what the cool parts about it are because it doesn't feel like it until significantly later. So um, I can't do this on the screen, so if you're watching the recording, that's not going to help you. Uh, so um, have you, has anybody told you how dyslexia affects the brain? Not really. Okay, it's actually really cool. So we have all these neurons floating around in the brain and we don't store data in like neurons themselves. The recall, recollection and storage of data is actually a pathway through the neurons. So if we have a grid like this and we see a four-legged animal that's really small and has fur on it and claws that can retract. Uh, our brain, like the first time we ever see this and maybe have the name cat attached to that image, our brain will fire off in a random way. And it will be done in like, this will be the order. And at this point in time, the knowledge about what a cat is, is now this path. So it's not just like one specific spot in the brain, it's starting here and going down this path is cat, like recalls every bit of knowledge that we have about cats. Unfortunately for us dyslexic people, we may start at the same place, but we'll turn off in a random direction in the middle of that, and we'll get dog or just something else because that was a different, like that series pass is not the same as cat, it's something else. That's the reason why when we're spelling things or when we're doing signs, we'll end up in a wrong one, especially since they're often aligned together with similar things. But we could go like really far off and like you're thinking of the name of someone and you just get some random image that pops up in your head, it has nothing to do with it whatsoever, and it's because our brain just went haywire. Sometimes we're even consistent with how we go off of it. 
And then sometimes it doesn't matter at all. You're perfectly fine. And we just get the proper, the proper pathways. So there, there's a lot of negatives to this, um, as you probably are aware of. Um, you can't become an adult with, with dyslexia and not know intimately the negatives that can come with it. Um, there are a lot of positives, though. And in fact, uh, if, if one were to look at the number of top CEOs and scientists uh, of the fields, a ir, an irproportional, unproportional number of them are dyslexic. So, Albert Einstein, Steve Jobs, uh, they're both dyslexic. And this is both also the reason why they both say that education sucks, because they were unable to be educated. Like, Einstein failed math multiple times, not because he didn't understand math, it's just that because the way that we taught it was not compatible with the way that he could show that he understood it. So the idea is that what's the benefits though? Like why were why are they so amazing? It's actually because they're dyslexic, because they're able to use this. We can be incredibly creative because nothing ties us into a box. Because when we start making connections, we'll make random connections that can provide us with brand new phone types to make that nobody's thought of before, or brand new theories about the universe. We can do that. So, how do we sort of mi mitigate the bad and keep the good? Because that's what we want to do. And so that's where this like personal knowledge systems, if we can't trust our brains when we recall stuff, then the, the idea of just then don't trust our brains, let's find something else that we do trust. Like for example, various uh, accounts online that we put our knowledge into can update if we put it in wrong and then just rely upon that over and over and over again. That way we don't have to memorize it. It's there for us. So, um, first one is like general knowledge. Uh, my suggestion for this is that we create our own wiki. So, um, GitHub allows us to create a wiki for us for free that we can then update forever. So I want to show you an example of Kyle's wiki first. Uh, if I go to, because he's built his out quite a bit. I'm just going to search for Kyle Cooperly on GitHub. Wait for it to load. Wikis. He named his knowledge. So he has he has a um, repo called Kyle Coverly slash knowledge. It's a completely empty repo. It has nothing in here. But if you go to wiki on the right up here, he has a bunch of pages, 99 of them to be exact, about just notes that he takes. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, we all know that he's huge into Agile. Well, he has all of his notes in here. He doesn't actually, like he has a bunch of this memorized, but he also puts all of these down in here. So my suggestion is that we can use this to even a higher degree of just to like general knowledge. It's like literally everything that you might want to recall in the future, throw inside of something like So I'm not aware that they do. Is that the only like drawback? It seems like I would be on the computer through yes. access or do it through a browser. Right. No, you can do it through the browser. Okay. So here, one thing, one thing that I want to do with your computers is that we can just create the wiki for you right now. Okay. So go to your your homepage on GitHub. Create a new a new uh, repo and name it knowledge or something else if you don't want it to be knowledge. Now note this will be a public repo, 
so other people can look at this. If you want to do a private one, I can show you later like other projects that you can use that are private. Um, uh, that being said, most of the things I'm going to suggest for here, like code-wise, they're they're perfectly fine to be to be public for like that kind of stuff. Then just go over to Wiki. There's absolutely nothing in it right now. You just create the first page, and you'll be dropped into the web editor for this. Okay. And you can edit this in your browser, and you'll just save the page in the bottom. Nice. And there's these handy little links. This is going to be Markdown that you use. Okay. So uh, you don't even need to learn the language Markdown. You can just use the top buttons there, and it will. Uh, It'll just sort of put in the correct markdown for you. And that's like, this is the simplest way, it's the most generic type of knowledge way that you can set up. Cool. And then hit preview or save, and then, then it's all there and everything is good. So that's general knowledge. Now, code snippets are another thing. The number of people who, um, and this is where it gets really interesting because as a dyslexic person, I have always done, done this. I create little snippets where I store code that I'm going to reuse over and over again. And the number of people that are learning JavaScript or any other coding language who attempt to just memorize everything is shocking to me. Yeah. Um, and then we see that and try to do that ourselves and then it fails horrendously. So just... This is the biggest thing, is um, dropping our, any shame we might feel of, of being able to do that and instead soar way above them by doing this and then suggesting to them, you should do this too. Uh, because, truthfully and honest, most, of, most people who are not dyslexic don't have as good memories as they think that they have. We just happen to know that ours is not that good to begin with. <laughs> So in, like my favorite one right now, I've gone through a whole bunch of these, is actually another project by GitHub, and it's called GISTS. So in the top right, we see our profile dropdown. Mm -hmm. Click on that and go to your GISTS. This will, this is code snippet. These are like the ability to do code snippets. So give it a file name, a description, and if your file name has the appropriate extension like .js, then you can write code into here. It will have syntax highlighting somewhat for you, yeah. and you can create public or private, unlimited for both of them. Oh, nice. And um, if we take a look, I have a whole bunch of these. If I look at all my guests, The organization for them is a little bit questionable, like you can't choose which page like once you get a huge number of them. But something that I did discover that's really cool is all of the editors have a plugin that allow you to explore GIS through the editor themselves. So you can in Atom, it'll open up a new window, like it's a new file, and it'll have like, or in like the top down when you do like Command P, It'll show you the titles of all your GIFs if you if you ask for it. You click on it, and it'll just a new window open up, so you can copy and paste things in, or just reference it as you're typing them out. That's really handy. And you can highlight. You can take a uh, a file and upload it to GIST. Mm -hmm. So if you write out a bunch of code, you're like, I think I should save this for later. Yeah. Then uh, you just put that into GIST. Add like then add some comments about what exactly is going on, yeah. and uh, then everything will be good. Let me see. This is still. Where is it? It's like here's one really small one. I have this configuration file for when I program in Lua, and. It looks tiny here. It's only four lines long. But this is the type of thing that a lot of people might feel they should just memorize and write that file in. 
And I'm like, nope, there's, first of all, I'm not going to memorize those, those things. Like, yeah. even though it's simple, it looks simple, I'm not going to memorize this. So instead, I put it to the GIST. I can, in my editor, copy it from GIST into my project directory, and then it's there, and everything works just fine. Hmm. If I want to update my defaults, I just come in here and update this one. It uses GitHub's rules, so every update is like a commit, so you can always roll back to old commits if you want to. Nice. So this is how I use it. I also like all the CS algorithms. When we get to when you get to that part of the curriculum, we do things like how do you write a um, a sorting algorithm? Well, I can write them. I always forget how to, so I just wrote them in here so I can reference them. Reference again. them and look up and write the Exactly. So I don't have to recompile in my head how it works, which is exactly how I how I've decided to learn. Which is I don't memorize facts, I memorize theories because that for me works just fine. Mm -hmm. So when I when I have um, when I'm like figuring something out, and you'll you'll notice that when I teach too, especially if I'm live coding, is I don't necessarily know what I'm supposed to write yet, but I know how the language works. I know how computers work. And I can recompile the general, like the theory knowledge into specific knowledge at the time. And that works for me. Nice. So this is, this is code snippets. Okay. Now, the last thing is checklists. It's just basically the final, like just throwing away everything that you might think about, you know, keeping things in your mind and externalizing everything. So Google has a, uh, Google has a really awesome Google this. Uh, it's, it's not called Google this, hold on. It's keep dash sharing. Yeah. If you go to keep dash sharing and, uh, for example, I have a grocery list yep. that I keep. Yes, it is. It is the you, best. You can share it with people too. So, mm -hmm. let's say if you have like four roommates, you can share it with all four roommates, and then when you update the list, they see the updated list. Which this one doesn't seem to be going, but you can also. So like here, I, use, I was using this on the weekend to just make sure I got some of the Yeah, but I've even gone like I just create lists for everything, including like packing bags. Yeah. Like I have a list for what to bring to work in my backpack every single day. And it's just little things like this. And then because of this, I'll get people saying like. You're just always on top of it. You never forget or miss anything. And um, it's just because of things like this. Yeah. It helps keep you on your eyes, especially when your brain's not going to remember everything. Exactly. Okay. So these three things, uh, there, there's a lot more potential things to do around, around this. But those three things are great places to start uh, to just like get the practice up. And just externalize everything. Just pretend that you have a hard drive that corrupts itself every couple of hours and then just throw everything out as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Now you're asking, what do I do if, um, if I can't take notes directly into the wiki, let's say? Yeah. Literally any method of taking notes is a great, is like, take that and then at night, have a nighttime routine where you look through all the things of the day and then put them into the wiki. So um, I don't have my phone here, it's charging in the back, but I try to have a, a routine where I go in and I, I click the, um, I do the thing where it shows all the applications that are like currently open and I'll just start closing them um, and then anything that might have data in it that I want to keep, I'll go into it, look at the data and then enter it into like a more permanent location. And that way, at the next day, everything's closed. That way, I know everything that's opened is something that I've opened and done something in the last day or so. Nice. Yeah. 
That works great. I yeah, I've just been using the Google Keep just to like take notes when I make notes, and then like I'll set a reminder on that. So like you know, usually the day before it's like something that's due, or two days before, or yeah, week, just so I know like hey, this is happening. Like, do that. Um, the calendar application has been great too. Yeah. So like using all of our tools for that kind of stuff. So once we get all these things, then then we can start thinking about the advanced stuff. Um, advanced things are gonna be automation tools. You're now developers. Like you now have the ability to write code for yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is not going to be like a part of the program per se, but automating the heck out of everything for yourself. That's, this is gonna be a key thing. So for example, okay. um, Let's say you have a command that you do all the time and you often just don't do it right um, because like, you have to memorize all these options that go with this command. Yeah. Well, what can be done is to write a shell script and use the computer so that you can just write one command and it does all the things for you mm -hmm. at once. Then put that one command into your notes so that way you know even what that is. Or just understand how the computers work so you can go find it again. So um, one example here, if I open up my terminal, the most basics of these is called aliases. Okay. So um, if I take a look at, just type alias, oh my ZSH installs a bunch of aliases for you already. So if you look through these, um, yeah, for example, there's this GC, um, GCM, Git Checkout Ma Master is what that is for. Okay. For some reason, I don't have a problem remembering shortcuts, like short commands, but the long commands I do have trouble with. Mm -hmm. So, um, I can do gcmsg is git commit dash m, and then you can just type the message after it. Oh. And it's tab autocompleted. Oh, so so I can do gcm tab, and it will show me all the potential things that I could do. That's handy. And if you want to be a little bit more verbose with yours, there's no real limit to what you can write down. So you can make the alias whatever you want to be, and then just type the first couple letters and hit tab, and it does the rest for you. That's, that's handy. So the, the way that you do this is exactly how it's written out here. So let's say you wanted to create an alias for uh, listing, listing like all the files in the current directory. Mm -hmm. We know the command for that, right? LS. LS. So it's hard for me to type and show this at the same time. Okay. If I do, um, so ls is the command, that's fine. If I type alias space, the name of the alias that it's going to be. So I'm going to call this um, list all files. No space equals quotes and now the command. So L S S. Now I have an alias. This won't this will go away if I open up a new terminal or if I reboot my computer or close this terminal. Okay. There is a file that you can put them in to make them more permanent. Um, and uh, that one, it's going to get a little bit tougher if I try to like do this because there's, we're not going to remember that. Yeah. So um, just remember that you can make it be more permanent if you want. And at that point, Google, full, Google Foo should take over and help yeah. out. Now if I type list tab, well, here's all of the commands that I can do. One of them is list all files, tab a couple more times, hit return. Oh, nice. And then it goes. Cool. So if you're doing a complex 
thing like your jumping thing that files like constantly. Yeah. You can just do that in your alias and then that way you don't keep jumping back and forth. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, and then there's uh then if aliases are not complex enough, because let's say you want to make you want to do like four or five different commands in a row, mm -hmm. like you just do one command and so like four or five different of things. That's called shell scripting. Okay. So that's where you just create a file, put all the commands in it, make sure that it can be run as a program, and then execute it. Execute it. Oh, and cool. then it does all the things that you want it to do. All right, that's, yeah. So the idea is that use your knowledge of a programmer to program solutions for yourself. Okay. Old concept of, you know, work smarter, not harder. Exactly. And for us, it's going to be, well, the, you might be fast at typing those out, but I am more um, consistent and never make a mistake because I don't bother trying it every time. Yeah, you can't do it the other way. Exactly. Yeah. So just knowing that there's these tools out here, I hope is going to be extremely helpful. Yeah. That would help out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with your knowledge or problem solving, um, I saw Kyle put up like skills he had there, these business techniques and stuff like that. Um, do you, I don't know, if, like you can say like, hey, like I have all these notes on you know this really cool project I did. Upload those in there too. Yeah, you. Um, I think that you can put a. Uh, I think that you can create like upload files okay. to it. Now, if you can't upload files in here, well, that's where something like Dropbox or Google Drive comes in. Yeah. Because you can upload files to there, get the link to it, and yeah. put the link like in there. So you just click there, like, hey, I want to know everything about, it. say, Twitter treatment. Let's click on that. Yes. Right. And then, if you want to be really like. Because then, then you were, were, were talking about um, maybe making a little bit too much work to do all that stuff. Yeah. Well, that's where programming comes in. Uh, there are APIs and there are ways to get Google Drive and Dropbox on your computer. Yeah. So you can do things like, well, what if I created a command that if I gave it the name of a file, it would just move it to the appropriate directory on my computer where it uploads and then gives me the link that I then put into here. Cool. That's handy. Pretty interesting. Yeah. So I think the idea is just keep eyes open and never stop trying to improve. Like there, there is no such thing as a perfect system. And if like if the wiki isn't working for you, even if you have a ton of things in that wiki, just start using another one if it if like if it helps. Yeah. So any any questions or thoughts, sir? Um, not that I had. It was a little bit just got bombarded there. So. Well, I did record this, so you can okay. listen to it again. Okay. That's that's the idea of like, because yeah. I know, um, like I know the ability to like go back through can be fairly helpful. Yeah. Because say you're like, oh, I remember how to do this part, but what about that part? Like, like you know, where you were just writing something down and you missed it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's handy. I've been really enjoying the videos because of that. Just taking notes and I miss something. I was like, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Brooks. Yes. Yeah. I'm. I hope that I can help you. I hope that the knowledge that like there's a huge number of programmers and scientists who are dyslexic helps because being dyslexic is not. It, it's not a a sign that you just cannot do what you want to do in life. Yeah. It's it's actually kind of the opposite. <laughs> yeah, just teaches you how to do something else differently. Mm -hmm. um, there's a really good TED talk uh, that was in Europe, I think, in mm -hmm. England uh, recently, in which they um, they basically they made the call to say, hey, we should be teaching everybody else to think like a dyslexic person, as opposed to the opposite. So, all right. Cool. Thanks, Bruce. Yes.